Tonight, we continue our look at New Mexico's nuclear legacy, where almost a third of the nation's toxic uranium mill waste sits in unlined piles. It's a big problem for our precious groundwater. As part of our partnership with the nonprofit newsroom ProPublica, Matt Grubbs looks at how the state is trying to ensure someone will clean up the radioactive mess. The initial development of nuclear energy was military. When New Mexico's uranium legacy began, job one for the U.S. was nuclear supremacy. Decades later, communities around New Mexico have learned that victory came with a price, paid in cancer, respiratory disease, toxic water, things many of us might not notice unless we look. I think because you don't see it or, or smell it or, or feel it. Does it feel like New Mexico got a raw deal out of this? There are New Mexicans who are paying a really steep price for those activities. Natural resource injuries, so the groundwater contamination, for example, is um, affecting people now, and it's going to affect people into the future. At ProPublica, a team led by reporter Mark Olalde spent months looking, finding data no one else had on a quarter of a billion tons of uranium waste across the country and what it's doing to groundwater. We decided to step in and kind of do that cradle to grave type analysis to figure out, you know, what are we talking about in terms of groundwater contamination? Where is this contamination? How much of, of it might there be? And really, who's harmed by it? This is a map of all the sites ProPublica studied. In New Mexico, there are two things you should know about the seven dots in our part of the country. First, many of them are among the biggest, if not the biggest, especially in here, waste sites in the country. Second, as you can see, they're clustered in rural parts of the state where they have an outsized impact on native communities like Laguna and the Navajo Nation. But it's definitely fair to say that New Mexico has borne the brunt of kind of the nuclear age in America. I mean, between all the research, the mining, the milling, and the waste that was inherently left behind, you know, I don't know if anyone really holds a candle to New Mexico's place in, in kind of America's, you know, dominance in the atomic age. All seven of New Mexico's mill tailing piles are either partially or fully unlined, letting contaminants seep into groundwater. That's true at 85% of the sites ProPublica reviewed nationwide, including the Homestake Mill site near Milan that we told you about in August. 30 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, New Mexico is still pushing for cleanup. I move House Bill 164. State Representative Debbie Sarignano was part of a group of lawmakers who last session sponsored a bill to create two uranium cleanup coordinator positions at two different state agencies. It passed without a single no vote. Yes. Representative. Yes. Does cleanup just keep falling through the cracks? Over the years, I think that's what's happened. You know, when people came and mined because the federal government asked them to, they needed uranium. They came, they mined, and they left. And we didn't have any regulations that said, you know, you have to clean up your mess. New Mexico Natural Resources trustee Maggie Hart Stebbin says with regulations now in place, it makes sense to have people whose job it is to make sure uranium cleanup continues. So having a regular meeting with, you know, the Energy and Minerals Department coordinator, the Environment Department coordinator, Game and Fish, we all have this role. And to have one place where we are collecting all the information is going to be really valuable. But part of what ProPublica found and what New Mexico's experience proves is that regulators are quick to issue exemptions to cleanup standards at five of New Mexico's seven mills, with exemptions requested and debated at the others, including Homestake. Just this year, that company asked the government to relax groundwater pollution limits in an area that's become a ghost town over the years. This idea that when companies um, are cleaning up sites that they have owned and they ask for an alternate regulation, it's almost always given to them. Is that a problem? Well, it's a huge problem. Our mission, our charge from the federal laws is to return the sites to pre-contamination condition when a company or an owner can um, can get the alternate con concentration limits that um, that doesn't really fit with what we are charged to do. In a statement to ProPublica, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said its decisions on alternate regulations for polluters, quote, provide reasonable assurance of adequate protection of public health and safety and the environment, unquote. 
The agency, which in fairness was told to develop regulations closer to the uranium industry's collapse than its start, said it tries to remain cautious when rewriting groundwater rules. It's a problem that will take decades more to solve as New Mexico reckons with its nuclear heritage. I mean, we made most of the uranium, or, or mine most uranium, for the whole country back when it was needed. So this, this has to be priority for the federal government. They have to do their part. They benefited. They have to do their part in cleaning it up. Matt Grubbs for Investigates.